After importing the survey data, the first thing we want to do is create a surface, or TIN, which stands for Triangulated Irregular Network, from the data. The TIN will dictate the design of our road in that it will aid decision making when creating the vertical geometry, and it will be what we interface with when matching in our road surface to the existing surface. To create a TIN, we select TINs, Create, Triangulate Data. The first field in this panel is prompting for a function name, and you can see the function icon here next to that field. Functions serve a unique purpose in that they are able to be recalculated. In this case, that means that whenever the data used to triangulate the TIN changes, the function can be recalculated and the TIN will be updated. We'll just name the function something that describes what it controls, which can be TIN ground. Next is new TIN name, and next to that field is the TIN icon. We'll call the TIN ground, and then press enter to automatically populate the model for TIN field. So what we're going to create here is a TIN called ground held in the model called lowercase TIN ground. I'll change the TIN color to a gray, so shade 32. Now I won't explain what each of these additional settings does, but if you do want to know, then you can click the help uh, we'll just additionally tick on Weed Tin and Remove Bubbles. And then move on to the Data tab. In the Data tab, we pick the data which we're going to use to triangulate the tin. If we want to use all the data in a single model, then we click this first icon. If we want to use all the data in the models that are currently added to a view in our project, then we click the second view icon. If we want to use the data in multiple models, then we click this third icon. And then the fourth icon, this gold star, is for selecting a view favorites file, which is a list of models that can be defined beforehand. We'll create one of these files in an additional learning video, but we won't use this option now. Because we have all of the models which we want to use to create this tin already added to the plan survey view, let's select the second view icon then again, pick the view icon to the right of the view field and pick the survey view from the list. After you pick the view, you'll see in the bottom of the panel that a Z min and a Z max are reported. This is a good quick check to make sure that the tin is within the height range that you'd expect. For example, sometimes there might be a stray data point at the elevation of zero for whatever reason. So if you have a Z min of exactly zero being reported here, you have reason to believe that something may have been imported that maybe shouldn't have been. But that's not an issue here. So let's then select triangulate. And then go and take a look at our tin. I'll keep this retriangulate tin panel open for now. So I'll create a new plan view using views new plan. I'll rename the view to tin. And move this view to the bottom left of the view space. Then add the model tin ground to that view, as well as the model survey boundary tin. To add multiple models to the view, we left click on the first model and then hold control and left click on the second model and that will select both of those and then select add. And you can see the triangles of the tin. You can also see that some triangles have been created on the outside of the tin boundary. For example, at the south of the area, you can see the triangles are being created across this large gap. This is where we can start talking about nulling, which is the removal of triangles. We'll click on the Nulling tab on the Retriangulate Tin panel that we left open. We can null, which is to say remove triangles that have an internal angle lower than what we input in this top field. We can null triangles that have a side length greater than what we input in this length field. In the Combined Angle and Combined Length fields, 
we can set criteria so that if both of these criteria are met, then a triangle will be nulled. And lastly, we can set a null polygon with which to null triangles. When you see this icon here next to the null polygon field, you'll be expected to pick an existing polygon in the project. So I'll pick that icon, then pick the string on the model survey boundary tin, which is that one there, and middle mouse click to accept. That's now filled out the polygon field with the boundary tin string. What this is going to do is remove all of the triangles that have been created outside this null polygon. So select retriangulate. And you can see in our plan tin view that those triangles outside the boundary have now been removed. Let's now select the perspective view from the view tabs at the bottom of the workspace. I'll move this view to take up the right side of the view space. And I can close this retriangulate tin panel now. And I'll add the model tin ground to this view. Now we can zoom in on the tin by scrolling the track wheel on our mouse. And an option I'll show you now, we'll get into a few more later, is chosen by selecting the orbit icon, which is the green planet looking one from the perspective view toolbar. So we left click this icon then left click and hold in the view. And as you move your cursor around, you can now rotate around the surface. So this perspective view is the best way to visualize the surfaces and designs. Now currently when viewing the tin in the plan and perspective view, we can only get an idea of the existing features and topography of the surface. Draping an aerial image onto this surface is an excellent way of providing more information and context regarding the surrounding conditions. This drape of an image is called a raster. And to create a raster for this surface, select strings, rasters, create. Under image format, you can see the image types which are able to be used to create a raster. We provided a TIFF file, which you'll need to download from the Moodle course and save along with all the other data set in the Getting Started Basic folder. And then select TIFF. Then for the raster file, select the folder icon and browse. Back to Getting Started Basic. And select the TIFF file, Train1064. You'll see the width and height in pixels, as well as the depth in bits is filled out in the panel. So select the location tab. We'll need to input the origin point manually, which is X of 42,500.5. And Y of 36,499.5. And the image has both a world width and a world height of 1500 meters. Then under the output tab, the name of the raster can stay as it is there. We set up a model name for the raster image to be stored under, which I'll make lowercase survey raster. We won't be creating a border so I don't need to worry about the tick box and the next field. We can apply a transparency to the raster, but we'll leave this as one, which will mean that the raster is opaque. Then we pick the ground tin to drape the image to, and select Create. Now when the perspective view is redrawn, either by scrolling in and out or selecting the redraw icon, the tin will now have the raster image draped on it. And when designing, we now have more context as to our surrounding environment. This isn't a hugely interesting raster. It was obviously taken in the middle of summer, but it does show that we have a pretty decent sized river running through our project site. 